afternoon, everyone, um, and welcome to my talk. Um, my topic is exploring the capabilities of um, ChatGPT for lexical graphical purposes, a comparison with Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary um, within the microstructural framework. Um, so I'm a student in Master, um, European Master in Lexicography, EMLEX. Um, so today I'm going to show um, um, so at the beginning of the of the state, like a few months ago, um, ChatGPT was released, and I was wondering, okay, ChatGPT are is capable of doing so many things, um, and I'm studying lexicography, so I was like, um, what can ChatGPT offer for lexicography or um, for dictionary users? Um, so I asked ChatGPT, can you replace dictionaries? Um, I was curious, and then ChatGPT answered, well, as an AI, I could try replacing dictionaries. But I have to warn you, my definitions might be a little unconventional. For example, instead of cat, I might define it as a fluffy, full-legged creature that secretly plots to take over the world with its irresistibly cute face. Um, so, and then I regenerate the answer to be more serious. Um, and then it said that, okay, as an AI language model, I can provide information and assistance similar to a dictionary, but I cannot fully replace dictionaries. And also, I may not always have the same level of detail or accuracy as dedicated dictionary. Um, so this is our aim of our studies. Um, so we want to explore to what extent is ChatGPT capable of providing data related to various lexicographical items. And we also want to see the similarities of the answers and the data provided by ChatGPT and Oxford Learner's Dictionary. Um, and now I'm going to go through methodology and results and the conclusions of and the future work. Um, the first one, we start with the methodology. I divided the methodology in six parts. So corpus and lemma selection, weekend's item class 1989, um, lexicographical prompts, data sets, manual analysis, and similarity scores calculation. Um, so we chose the British National Corpus. Um, we checked multiple um, corpora for English. And um, the, the, the results we get from different corpora are quite the same because we use um, 10 most frequently used words in five different parts of speech. Um, basically noun, verb, adjective, adverb, and preposition. And these parts of speech are the most um, parts of speech that used in almost every languages. Um, so we chose 50 lemmas in total. Um, and as our criteria for, criteria for evaluation, we use vegan's item classes. Um, he suggested these item, eight item classes for a general and learner's dictionary. Um, there are 41 lexicographical items within these eight classes. And also we use the adapted and simplified version from Engerbeck Lemnitzer um, as our criteria for evaluation. Um, the next one, lexicographical prompts. A prompts is basically um, how we communicate with um, large language model effectively. Um, so we have to find out what would be um, effective to talk to ChatGPT, to chat with ChatGPT. Um, and also it serves as an instruction for to ensure specific qualities and quantities of the output and of the results as well. But prompts for lexicographical purposes are still under study currently. Um, so it would be better if we um, do more research about um, how to use um, ChatGPT in, um, for dictionary use. Um, so next one, I try to, um, um, try to get the information for um, ChatGPT um, by this question, provide a dictionary information for lemma time. And this is the answer that I get in March 2023. Um, basically, there are not a lot of um, um, data related to lexicographical items. Basically, there's a lemma sign, um, part of speech, um, the definition, and maybe um, polysemy. And then 
um, due to that lack of information within um, this invisible um, microstructure, um, we asked if ChatGPT can maybe provide the proper prompts that we can use to use uh, to um, use the ChatGPT effectively. Um, I asked provide 10 concise prompts or templates that can make you do lexicographical tasks. And these are some tasks that ChatGPT offers. For example, define the word. Um, this is a definition. Create a list of synonyms. Provide an antonym for the lemma, and so on. Um, the next one, data sets, how we create data set, we divide it into primary tables. Um, so the first one is for our man, uh, manual analysis. Um, with um, It consists of 50 lemmas, 41 lexicographical items, and we put present and absent. Um, depends on the availability, availability, I'm sorry, availability of um, the answer that ChatGPT can provide or not. And then the next one, the next table is just for similarity scores calculation, also from 50 lemmas. But here we only interested in five lexicographical items. Um, and we also, this one, for this one, we collect the actual answers from ChatGPT and um, from Oxford and to compare it with the, um, I'm going to explain how we calculate that in a second. So um, the method for manual analysis, the result is based on eight item classes, as I said, to see the capability of providing data related to um, corresponding lexicographical items. Um, and then we calculate this um, data set into percentages. Um, for the similarity scores, we use the method of blur and rock. Um, and we only see five lexicographical items. Um, and the score do not indicate the quality of the answer, but just to see how similar it is between um, those two sources. And now I'm going to present you the result of our study. Um, first one, I'm going to start with the manual analysis. Um, um, we're going to start with the lemma sign. So the lemma count is 50, so we consider all the 50 lemma, and ChatGPT can, and Oxford can offer 100% um, of the lemma sign. Of course, it's the elementary element for the microstructure of the dictionary, so um, it's 100%. And the next one related to phonetic and phonological and autographical information. Um, this one, you can see that Oxford miss some of the lexicographical items. For example, accents, syllables, and um, syllable division. I think this is because um, Oxford are already offered the pronunciation in, in, in form of audio file. Um, so we don't, um, the users might not need that. Um, but instead, ChatGPT provide um, this um, data related to these lexicographical items. Um, and now I want to show you the answer that I got from ChatGPT. So I asked to provide a pronunciation for people. And this is the answer that I got from ChatGPT. So the pronunciation of people is generally the same in both American and British English. So we got the dialect here. And also it is pronounced as people. So the um, uh, international phonetic alphabets, and also the literal, um, um, uh, the literal phonetic um, trans transcription as well for people who not who is not able to read the IPA. So, people, and we stress on the first syllable, so we can see that's the first syllable is with uh, is capitalized, so people know how to um, pronounce it. And next one related to morphological information. Um, there are, for example, inflection, degrees of comparison, compound, word family, and number. And in this class, we cannot consider all 50 lemmatas, lemmata because um, in, in each part of speech, they have, they possess different um, linguistic characteristics. Um, so we cannot um, calculate all of them. But we can see that both ChatGPT and Oxford can offer um, data related to all lexicographical items here. Um, but you can see that ChatGPT can offer greater number than the Oxford. But um, also, 
but the the information or the data that we got from ChatGPT is kind of, I would say it's doubtful and sometimes it confuses um, the learner. Um, so I try to, for example, here I give the example, provide degrees of comparison for good um, and ChatGPT provide positive degree, good, um, comparative, better, and superlative, um, best. Um, next one related to syntactic information, we can see that both ChatGPT and Oxford offer 100% of the data related to part of speech, valency, adjective distribution. Um, also, for example, adjective, we, adjective distribution, we of course can only consider um, the part of speed of adjective. Um, the next one, I give you an example. For example, provide valency for verb do. Um, the verb do is a transitive verb and its valency is two. So how um, ChatGPT provide this data is to using the argument um, structure and it also explain what's uh, argument structure is how to form a grammar correct um, sentence. Um, and next one related to syntactic semantic information, um, we can see here that the first items, collocation, phrase, same, and proverb, um, ChatGPT can provide 100%, but these information are not available for every lemma in um, in the Oxford. Um, also, um, we can see here that both ChatGPT can provide example sentences for 100%, but their approaches are different. Um, this is also has to be discussed because do we consider ChatGPT as a lexicographer? Because according to Wigan, the usage example are actually um, written by lexicographers. So if we consider ChatGPT as a lexicographer, then it is a usage example and not um, a citation text as the, the Oxford. Um, yes. And then the next one, um, semantic information. Um, it's the, there are many, yes. And so what's interesting here is to see that I put the plus sign there um, because Oxford usually able to provide illustrations, but as for our 50 lemmas, um, there are no illustrations to be seen, but we know that it's there and we prove that there are illustrations, but it's just not for these 50 lemmas. I also tried with ChatGPT to ask, even though I know that it's a, a text-based, it, it wouldn't be able to provide um, the illustration. But anyway, um, ChatGPT gave me the answer that, okay, it's the text-based AI language model, and it gives the description of a man in different situation, different um, age, and so on. And okay, related to pragmatic information, um, this one is, um, Oxford can do better in this one because um, ChatGPT need more context in terms of providing their systematic um, lexicographical items. Um, yes, in terms of this one, um, Oxford can do better. Um, the next one, Wigan didn't include this in other seven lexicographical items, but instead in other items, for example, etymology, um, both ChatGPT and Oxford can provide 100% of this. And of course, ChatGPT cannot offer cross-reference between entries because it's not a dictionary. Um, yes. And this is the example of um, etymology um, given by ChatGPT. Um, yes. And now we also compiled some other lexicographical items or features that are available on um, Oxford. Um, for example, C CFR level, ChatGPT can also provide as well topic, um, abbreviation, cultural information, political statement, and notes of usage. Um, the next one, we're going to take a look um, at the similarity scores, and we use Blur to calculate um, the answer that we got from ChatGPT in Oxford. Um, 
So the blur score consistently show that the lexicographical items containing more engrams receive lower scores than so indicating that ChatGPT's responses match better with a single word or in a uni unigram level. Um, this rule also go for the score for rock as well. Um, for example, this one matches 100% for um, the meaning we got from ChatGPT in Oxford. Um, now I'm going to show you the, um, the most um, the highest score of um, the calculation that we, we did. Um, for a lemma also, um, this is the answer that we got. In addition, semicolon two, it's even the same with the semicolon. Um, so for example, next one child, um, you can see there are a lot of um, words that um, similar, they use quite the same words in terms of um, providing the definition. So conclusions, um, you can see that ChatGPT here, according to our, oh, sorry, Lemma, ChatGPT can um, provide better um, data related to lexicographical items, 68%. Um, that's more than the Oxford for 11%. And also um, the higher, um, the higher the similarity scores are, um, um, when evaluating candidate tastes at the unigram level, and the longer word units tend to receive lower scores. And um, future work that can be researched is, for example, um, to compare ChatGPT with other dictionaries, um, maybe in other languages as well, or um, lexicographical prompts, how do we use ChatGPT for um, dictionary use effectively? Um, and also, um, yes, also the evaluation criteria. Um, maybe there are better criteria for evaluating um, ChatGPT in terms of um, microstructure or dictionary use. And also, despite the limitation that ChatGPTs show promise as a um, language learning tool and lexicographic aid for um, English as a foreign language learner. Um, yes. So thank you so much for your attention. Um, I'm sorry if I may make any mistakes or anything. I'm still newbie in lexicography, so um, I'm open for any suggestions or questions that you have. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Question. My question is just, I, I didn't quite catch uh, when you talked about the unigram, mm -hmm. you perform better in unigram. Um, so they compare word by word, um, just one word. But when it's um, two uh, bigrams, that means it's two, it, they compare by two words. So I can show you the graph. Um, so there's blur one, blur two, blur three, two, four. Um, it's like a, um, unigram, bigram, that means like each word in each word, yeah. So an example of bigram will be like uh, two words like yes. very tall, mm -hmm. something like that? Yeah, oh. those together, yes. Uh, thank you, that's a very uh, thorough um, thank you. study. Um, I was just reading the end of your paper also and you say the study finds chat GPT performs better on average than OALD in providing information related to lexicographical items, mm -hmm. indicating its potential as a learner's dictionary. But you haven't said anything about the quality. So yes, it produced, can produce examples. Yes, it can produce definitions mm -hmm. and so on. But are they any good? You know? um, <laughs> yeah, I, I should. Actually, I should have done the quality um, um, analysis as well. But at this stage, I, I would love to continue the, the research. So I would do the quality as well in the future. Yeah, that, that would be yeah, a good thing. Good thank you, it. thank you. Thank you, uh, very interesting. Um, oh, a, couple, co a couple of questions, but first a very, very short one. Did you use ChatGPT 3.5 or 4? Um, it was 3. 
Okay. So now it's four. For yeah. example, if you ask for the dictionary information right now, it will also provide according to um, Oxford Advanced Learner Dictionary or according to Merriam-Webster, it also provides you um, the name of the dictionary that they extract the information from now. So it's, it's well, better now. It might hallucinate when it does that because it's not a search tool as such. But my, my actual question was, um, you seem, you just seem to be providing examples of asking it for say a definition or mm -hmm. etymology or something but we all know that ChatGPT provides different answers every time you ask it something. It's not like it has a standard answer. So, you know, do you just take the first one it provides always? Do you, do you ask three times and take the best one? Uh, or do you have a long prompt that says, please provide something mm -hmm. in the style of this, which in my experience gives much better results. I mean, I've started providing it with a, mm -hmm. with a sample entry in XML and said, please fill in this XML structure with information and you get much, much better results yeah. that way. So how have you done it? Have you just been plain text and so on and so on? Yeah, that's uh, what is problematic with the ChatGPT because, but I think what the solution would be to offer all the prompts that you need at the beginning of the, let's say, chat that we um, um, order chat or assign ChatGPT to, to do. For example, if we want, 40, 41 lexicographical items we can order or assign ChatGPT at the beginning. Okay, we want these lexicographical items and then we add one assignment, for example, provide dictionary information for this lemma. And then after that, you will get the whole um, microstructure, microstructural elements for 41 lexicographical items. You can do that as well. That would be better for the, the dictionary users, but then again, it's require um, background knowledge in prompt engineering. That would be, yes. Thanks, very interesting research. Um, maybe this is more of an idea. Mm -hmm. You took the, the top 10 lemmas from each part of speech category, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it might be interesting to also use like mid-frequency or even low-frequency lemmas um, because you would expect that ChatGPT would perform a bit worse mm -hmm. uh, because it saw less material concerning these words. Yes. And you could also make a point, if you want that, um, that maybe, maybe traditional lexicography has a point in these frequency ranges because the large language models mm -hmm don't see that much material in these right. frequency bands. Yeah. Do you right. think this is a good yes, idea? That's a good idea, yeah, yeah, for dark lexicography. So we can <laughs> we can use those um, with uh, lower frequency. Yes, that would be a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. We still have uh, a little time. <coughs> Just a note, if you're going to continue this research, then you need to do it again with ChatGPT 4 new model. Version, yes. Because 3.5 3 and 4, these are two completely different yes. systems. Uh, and, and, and the difference is huge, huge in all, all, all aspects. Yeah, that's also the difficulties of doing research about ChatGPT or technologies that move so fast and yeah, that's a problem as well. Thank you. I think we still have. Uh, thanks, yeah, interesting talk. So since you, um, you didn't do qualitative analysis, mm -hmm. so we just know what it's able to perform, but could the Oxford or dictionary be taken as sort of a gold standard and that you would evaluate ChatGPT towards this standard for the mm -hmm. items that it does contain? Mm -hmm. Actually, I would have to like consider what would be standard for, for us to, um, to, to compare it with, because um, we cannot say that, okay, Oxford, English dictionary is a standard dictionary, you know? Um, so that's why I think it's better to do with um, different dictionaries as well. So that would be better, uh, better ideas in, in the future, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, now our time is up, but we can continue afterwards, thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you.